Hey, good morning everyone, it's Tractor Man 44. I'm down here on, on death row, you know, at the bottom of the hill. I've got a dead Massey Harris 30 right here. It's my parts tractor. Uh, actually, it's not dead. The motor does run, but I've taken parts off of it, you know, to make the other three functioning and running daily drivers, you know, up and, and operational. As I'm getting ready to pull the part takeoff shaft out of it, there's still part of a, an aftermarket Dan user three point setup on it that operated off of the cultivator lift that's underneath the seat. That does not have to come off. And it's also fitted with an overrunning clutch, an ORC that people like to abbreviate them by. But I need to pull this power takeoff shaft and housing right out of the center of the transmission. Inside the transmission up in there, there should be a, a double-ended spline coupling that's pinned to the input shaft, which should allow us to drive or just tap this and pull it straight out back. Might have given a little influence, I don't know, but I've got a four or three quarter inch bolts I believe that have to come out in order for us to uh, dislodge this and pull it straight out of the transmission. Have to get in here and break these things loose. Top ones aren't too bad, the bottom ones are gonna be tough. Have to come in up underneath here and Got to be a problem, child. Kind of helps if you have one of these for the bottom. But I want to put the old shaft that's no good back in this rear end housing so that I can keep the moisture, water, and bird nests and stuff out of it because obviously the transmission and the final drive, all that stuff is still good in this one here. And I've got one of these 30s, as a matter of fact, who's got some horrible, horrible grumblings in the transmission. I may be needing this entire rear end one of these days. I don't know. Like I said, that double coupling should be up inside the, uh, towards the front of the transmission. It should be held in there with a double spline that'll, just female double spline that'll slide over the splines on the input shaft and then the splines of this power takeoff shaft should slide right into the other end of it. Now, I don't expect this to pop out very easily. There is a little bit of movement. That's a good thing, I got a little bit of movement. I just gave it the right amount of tug with the bar right here and it popped right loose. So now, here's my replacement power takeoff shaft. This, uh, this Model 30 here is fitted with a hydraulic cultivator lift and a rock shaft. And the other one, whereas the other one had the old mechanical cultivator lift that you had to step on with your foot in order to engage a set of gears. And that set of gears would rotate 180 deg or 360 degrees, which would move the rock shaft the distance that it needed to get your cultivators into and out of the ground. Whereas you've got a variance with your hydraulics. You can drop them a little bit or drop them farther or whatever. And it's even got a, a bit of a draft control set up on it. But at any rate, I had to disconnect this other little this other little linkage right here, and I've taken the bolts out, so we'll see if we can uh, knock this one loose. See if we can dislodge this one too. It's good when you can feel vibration. It's coming loose. This one doesn't look so good, does it? That 140 weight in there sure looks nasty. But there you go. This should be identical as far as replacement is concerned. Now the shaft from the much older 30, I think it's two or three years older, and the newer 30 are identical in everything. Length, diameters, everything is identical with the exception of this right here. It's got a circlip and it's got a ring cut in it. It's got a circlip holding it in place. And you see this drive cog right here. The reason this one does not have it is because the cultivator lift operates off of hydraulic. This one here actually had to have the part takeoff engaged. And when you would step on that, that little lever there by your foot, it would cause those cogs to become engaged, which would allow that rotation of the cultivator lift. And then once it would do its rotation, it would kick itself out and it would stay there again until you depress that foot control again. And then it would go, back, go ahead and, 
and raise your cultivators out of the ground. So that's not in the way of anything at all. I'm going to leave it on there. I'm not going to put it on here because there's no circlip ring. I'm just going to leave it on this one here. If you look dead center right here, that is the female portion that we have to hook up to. Let's see if I can get my light on it for you. There we go, right there. You can see the condition of the final drive, the bull gears and everything, you know, on the left and the right. You can see the differential inside there. And you can see the nasty 140 weight gear oil in there too. In preparation or in anticipation of trying to hold that up as long and as heavy as it is, you can imagine how hard that's going to be holding it up from all the way back here and trying to get it lined up. What I've done, I've prepared by taking a piece of inch and a quarter black iron pipe and I've reamed the inside a little bit. I'm going to be able to stick that over the top of the fire takeoff shaft and then that's going to give me a handle so that I can actually install that and control it as I'm trying to aim for that female receptacle in on the other end. I'm not expecting it to be a first shot type of thing. Got to go in and find it first. I think I'm in contact with it. I'm either in contact with it or I'm just below it. Nope, I'm not engaged with it. So I'm going to back out, regroup, and do this all over again. I've got my piece of um, black iron pipe stuck over the part takeoff stub. I put a liberal amount of silicone uh, sealant here to make me a gasket. The uh, gasket was too stuck on the other one down there. I'm going to just break it off and this one here came apart whenever I pulled it out. So now comes the fun. There she went. You can verify that you've engaged by uh, having the power takeoff in neutral and turn this shaft here and you'll be able to see the belt pulley shaft on the other side go ahead and turn. So now I can slip my piece of pipe. Well, let me go ahead and get a bolt started in here real quick. I cleaned them up on the wire wheel and got me a liberal amount of uh, anti-seize on the threads. Now this guy's got that added bracket over here for the uh, hydraulic so that's going to be a longer bolts on that side so the short ones will be on this side here. That's just to hold it snug not tight at all. There's the pipe. You can't hardly get that in there without that pipe on there. Good. No more does it have that play back and forth. I've got me an overrunning clutch that may or may not stay on there. And I've got good, nice, clean splines on that original shaft, I'm sure, under that ORC. Can you see this right here? My splines, my splines are wore down. Here's how thick they are, down here where my fingernail is. Right there, that's the good part of the spline right there. It's a full 3 8 of an inch at the very minimum. It's a full 3 8 of an inch. I'd have to measure that. But up here, we've only got about 3 16 of an inch. So this thing having been used, probably used for hours and hours and hours, with a worn coupling and that coupling working back and forth contributed to wearing that shaft that badly. So uh, we're taken care of now. Can you compare that to these guys right here? Big difference. There's just a little wear on this ORC right here, so um, I'm going to see how that's going to work with some of my uh, part takeoff shafts. And if that uh, makes it a little bit too tough to slide on and off, I'm going to go ahead and pop that off and take a look and see what the original spline under there looks like.
Goes on and off okay. Pin lines up, put a uh, 5 16 through there, you know, and we'll be good to go. There's a little bit of slip in there, but I'm going to run this for a while, and then if I have to, pop it off and throw it away. I think it's going to be just fine. For the limited use that, that this will see, I think it'll be just fine. Okay, there we have it. Uh, just a simple um, part takeoff shaft change out. The old one had so much in play in it, and the splines were worn out so badly, I couldn't hardly get any of my universal drawer part takeoff uh, shafts to attach to and, and remove without the use of a hammer. Uh, this one here is going to slip on, slip off just as easy as can be. So all I lack now will be to locate me a, a shroud that protects the shaft whenever you're climbing on and off of the tractor. Uh, I don't know that I've got one. I've got them on a couple of good tractors, but I don't know if I have a parts one available for this one here. But at any rate, quick and simple repair, and we are ready to hook up to something and go ahead and use it. Make sure it's going to work the way it should. And so that's the end of this one. You know what? This is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.